Watching it at that magnitude, like at the Hollywood Bowl, there was a giant choir. I was like, wow, this is actually awesome. Yeah. Like, take aside like politicalness, religion, all of that. Like, you cannot deny like the art that's being created. It's so just true. no one else is doing it. So I think it'll be really awesome to see. Welcome back, Hublets. Today, we are sifting through some vivacious viral vitriol mm -hmm. in a place we like to call scroll control. <laughs> now, it's only been about a month since we brought you the news that Kanye's Jesus is King album dropped, and already, Kanye and Dr. Dre have announced a joint project. Yep, Jesus is King 2 is coming Ooh. soon, was the caption under a picture of the two moguls standing side by side in a recording studio. Now this will be the first time that they've ever worked together and yeah. many are excited to see and hear what will come of this unlikely collab. What do you think? Will you be listening? I'm definitely gonna be listening. I mean, yeah. we said in a, in a previous show, we were just talking about how like everything that Kanye does, it's like at least I'm gonna stay involved, even if I don't like it yeah. or feel type, some type of way about it, I have to keep going because I want to see where his evolution takes him and where it all Definitely. ends up. And his sound with Dr. Dre's production, I can't even imagine what yeah. that would be like. They're so different in so many ways mm -hmm. that, and just the whole vibe and even the way that they came up in rap was so mm -hmm. different. They two completely separate times. Dr. Dre was more like politically driven and you know what I mean, with NWA and all the stuff that he went through. Yeah. And Kanye was just like, I wear polo, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so it's like the way that they became famous and, and even just their their appeal and, and kind of crowd appeal is really different. Yeah, I know. I think it'll be super interesting and I like that you brought up like the evolution of Kanye because yeah. You know, he recently like premiered his opera that happened. Yeah, like, I had tickets in, to that. I didn't, I didn't go. I'm upset. You should have gone because I, I was watching like everyone's stories that were there. And truly, like, I know I've been a little skeptical about this yeah. whole like Jesus is King thing, but watching it at that magnitude, like at the Hollywood Bowl, there was a giant choir. I was like, wow, this is actually awesome. Yeah. Like, take aside like politicalness, religion, all of that. Like you cannot deny like the art that's being created. It's so just, true. no one else is doing it. So I think it'll be really awesome to see him and Dre collab. It'll be super fun. There you go. Regardless of what you feel about Kanye, there is one thing you can't deny. His confidence is nothing short of magical. Mm -hmm. And another person who seems to share that magic is none other than Miss Jenny from the block. Hey. Don't be fooled by the The 50-year-old icon. Can you believe that? She's 50. I know. The 50-year-old icon graces the cover of this month's GQ magazine wearing no makeup and looking not a day older than 32.5. Yes, I said it. Wow. 32.5. All right. I like the confidence. <laughs> yeah, she looked awesome. And it, she did an interview too, and she talks about everything from her beginning days as one of the very few Latinas in the entertainment industry to just burst the bubble, you know? Yeah. And after so long as one of the highest paid actresses in the game, she was okay with not being paid for her role in her recent box office hit, Hustlers, which I did not know that even happened. I didn't either. Like, how did she not get paid for that? Because <laughs> she was so good. So yeah. good. Yeah, I mean, she's. She's such a dope person. I, I love everything she does. She's just like a magical, even World of Dance. I love that show. Oh okay. my God, I know. <laughs> such a good show. <laughs> <laughs> that is right, my friends. And although her involvement with the NFL is a topic that most people would expect her to be pretty tight-lipped about, considering the controversy surrounding the sport at the moment, mm -hmm. J-Lo gracefully shares that she is grateful to have such a large platform to spread a positive message with the show she's planning for her upcoming performance, headlining this year's Super Bowl halftime show. Yeah. What do you think about, well, first of all, are you gonna watch? This? Heck yes. And secondly, what do you think about halftime shows as a former Laker girl? Well, thank you for house. bringing that up, Bruno. <laughs> what? I mean, to me, I am not a football fan. Right. So when it comes to the Super Bowl, it's like who's performing. It's all about That's the, the show. only thing I care about. I got you. Um, and when I heard that it was JLo and Shakira, I was like, this is going to be the best yeah. halftime show <laughs> of all time. I also heard that, um, spoiler alert, Bad Bunny might be showing Whoa, up. Okay. Got that from some insiders from that I there. know. Yes. And I just think it will be just such a huge moment especially for latin people in totally. pop culture i mean i and get in miami yes. I mean, like, it's gonna be fire like i get the controversy and i know that that's like still we're still in the thick of like all of the kaepernick stuff and yeah. all of that but i actually love that j-lo said that she was grateful to have such a big platform to share a positive message because yeah. like 
you know, there's been instances in my life when I competed for Miss USA and Donald Trump was like, he still owned the property. Right. And he was like talking, you know, badly about Mexicans. And everyone was like, you should drop out, you should drop out. But I felt the same way. I was like, here I am going to be on like a world stage on national television. And I want to represent yeah, my people. Yeah, who cares and, like, about this dumb way. dude who's like, yeah. Yeah, so I love when people can like see the positive like opportunity there instead of just backing out. I feel but you, right? I don't know. That was me just ranting. But from one Latin beauty queen to the next, if I do say so myself, 30-year-old Emma Coronel Aspiro. I totally butchered her name. I think you got is that, it. Is that right? Okay. Well, she is the wife of drug lord El Chapo, and she's officially joined the cast of VH1's reality show Cartel Crew and reveals her plans to start up a clothing business naming the line after the imprisoned wow. drug lord. Wow, a little collab, hey? <laughs> All right, a little Dirty Vidalka yeah. collab in the works. There's an opportunity there. Shoot. <laughs> the show boasts a cast of several known cartel queen pins and families alike, promising to be an instant viral hit. Many critics scrutinize the show's willingness to look past the agendas of the characters to pretty much use the show as a platform to glorify the lifestyle and even maybe launder money <laughs> for <laughs> these people crazy. through you know, these kinds of business plans that, that they're having. I mean, the, the clothing, you got to think, like, where is this money coming yeah, from? Yeah, no, it's true. And BH1 doesn't seem, or they seem to be enjoying all of the attention. I don't yeah. think they have a problem with it at all. I don't know if I could ever be on a show like this or any reality show for that matter. What about you? I really don't think I could do it. I feel mm -hmm. like if I had the opportunity, I, I would be I would be into it, but the idea of it, and then in yeah. practice, it might get a little bit scary once I realize, like, oh, they, they really want to know yeah. All of this Same. Stuff. It's okay. We'll just stick to hosting the hub. <laughs>